Hey everyone, uh, this is the first video of a series in which we'll dive into the internals of the Nix code base by implementing together a new built-in function, built-ins.randomStarPath, which, uh, as its name indicates, will return us a new random star path from the underlying star every time it is called. So I chose that specific built-in because, uh, well, first, it's totally useless, and but more importantly, it will also give us an opportunity to look at a lot of different layers of the Nix implementation from the front-end language to the gory details of the story implementation or the daemon protocol. And in this specific video, uh, I'll be with Valentin and we're going to look at a first naive implementation of the built-in and also we're going to start to write some tests for it. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy it and find it useful. So, okay, so the goal is to uh, implement a new Nix built-in uh, that we're going to call built-ins.randomStorePath uh, with the, the ID being that random star path is going to take one star path at random in your store, a valid path, and return that. Uh, which is kind of a, a stupid ID, but is nice because it can. Uh, it's an occasion to touch on a lot of different aspects of Nix, uh, from the evaluator to the actual low-level store implementation. But uh, I think today we're mostly going to start with uh, the the evaluation part, uh, registering the new built-ins, maybe giving it a working implementation, but that would be very naive and inefficient and also try to add a test for that uh, so that we have something to work on uh, once we want to write the proper implementation. Uh, so let's start. I'm on the latest um, Nix master. Uh, let's create a new branch. Uh, I said random, random star path. So, okay, so if we look at the Nix source tree, so there are different uh, sub libraries. Uh, the one we're interested in right now is libexp, which is the one uh, that defined the evaluator. And in particular, there's a primops file which defines the, the Nix primops. Um, and to define a new primop, you essentially have to create an instance of this register primop class, uh, which, as its name indicates, it's gonna is gonna do some uh, side effectful magic once you create an instance of it and register the primop, and you create it essentially by passing it an info struct. Uh, in which you pass the name of the primops, uh, the list of the args it takes uh documentation optionally which is always good and more importantly the this primop fun which is the actual c plus plus function that's going to be called uh when the primops is called on the nix land and primops fun is a function that takes uh an evol state which is the ambient state of the evaluator or the current position in the nix code uh, for error messages a list of value pointers, uh, which is the list of arguments of the primop, which by contract will be equal to the arity of the primop. And a last value, which is actually the return value of the primops, which is passed as argument for uh, performance reasons so that you don't have to reallocate it. And so we can look at how the existing primops are registered in primops.cc. So for example, uh, let's look at the call to register primop. Uh, let, let's find a, a simple one. Okay, okay, is null. So here you can see this. Uh, so this is the info uh, struct that we saw just earlier. Uh, so we define its name, which is the name in which will uh, appear on the Nix land. Uh, so it has one argument, which is called E. That's uh, This string is just what's going to happen in the documentation. Uh, a little doc string. Uh, okay, and now I learned that it's deprecated. I didn't know that. And the implementation function is null, 
which will simply force the first argument and check whether it is null. So arg0, which is the first argument, take its type and create a Boolean value indicating whether this type is null or not. And so that's essentially all we need to know to define uh, at least a, a mock of our new primop. And don't hesitate. Primitive to... operator, right? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Primop is a primitive mm -hmm. operator, which uh, on the language are regrouped and the built-ins uh, with the terms are essentially uh, used inter interchangeably. And uh, OK, so that's the actual implementation of register primop. We don't care about that. But so we can uh, register a new primop. So register. Whoa, 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 to accomplish. Um, maybe for uh, for for a little deeper understanding, when when are these you know, register calls actually run? Uh, so because these are top level uh, top level values uh, in the in the CC file, uh, they they are called uh, right at the start of the program. Uh, I think I'm a bit fuzzy on the exact detail, but I think it's even called before main uh, is entered. And uh, so behind the scenes, actually, we can have a quick look at the implementation of register primop. Uh, there's a list, uh, so this primops type, which I think is a vector, yeah, it's a vector of uh, info, the thing we construct. And so whenever uh, the dynamic linker loads that library, so at the very, very start of the program, it's gonna call all these register primop constructors. And these constructors are actually adding a new element to this primops list, which is here, a oh, vector. And once the program enter, uh, so we start the main function, uh, this list of primops is already constructed. That's just a fancy way of building it in a modular manner because you can register a primop anywhere in the code. And so yeah, let's let's try and register a new primop. So static oh, while we do that, I just start compiling it in another terminal so that we don't we can just incrementally rebuild things when we need. So we create a new register primop, uh, static just being a C++ keyword to say that it's gonna be local to this file. We don't need to export the symbol. Uh, so let's call it primop uh, random store path name. So by convention, uh, except for the very, very first primops, which didn't follow that, but the primops are all starting with two underscores. So let's call it random star path. Um, well, currently we are, it's not gonna take any argument. Maybe we'll be willing to add some at some point, but um, let's create the documentation because that's always a good thing to do. And uh, return a random star valid star path uh, how to well, from the evaluation store the wording is not great but that should be okay for now and we need to pass a function which is the implementation of our primop and it's complaining that the function is not uh, defined, which is all right. So what's the type of this already? It's okay, let's just copy paste that. So let's define our uh, prim random store path function. So what we need to do, so we don't care about this args thing because we don't have any and all we need to do is to return um, a star path. So for a very first, I mean, put a star path into the V value. So we have, uh, like the values have a bunch of make something methods to uh, put 
different things in them. So there's no, I don't think there's the star parser essentially represented as strings. Uh, so we need to make it a string and okay, let's just be very, oh, and the auto completion is trying to list uh, everything under slash nick slash start. That's really annoying because that's freezing everything. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's just have an hard coded string for the time being. Hey. And now uh, let's rebuild this. And we're going to be able to try uh, in the new Nix REPL uh, whether our primops is actually defined. So we can get it under the outputs folder. Uh, there's the, our new Nix. We can enter Nix REPL. And if you will see, so there should be an underscore underscore random stop path value, which returns this AIA level. And it's also available under built ins dot random stop path, which is the way most people are probably going to access it because it's much more flexible. Um, so that's already something nice. Uh, it's, a bit limited because this is not exactly a valid star path. We can be just slightly smarter for now. Yeah, just a question. Was that an artifact of the recording or um, did the second call take a lot longer? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, that was probably an artifact of the recording because here it's not okay. uh, taking a... It's probably technically very slightly slower because you have to evaluate this built-ins record but that should be uh, nearly instantaneous okay because for me it looked like it took like five seconds oh so i guess that no that must have been an artifact okay um so yeah let's at least return something that looks like a star path that's going to be nicer so actually um, so in Nix, uh, so uh, as far as the evaluator is concerned, a star path are generally just strings, but Nix internally has a notion of a star path as a first class value, uh, which we can construct in a different way. Currently, we're just going to use the magic star path dummy uh, value, which is essentially a star path with a zero hash and a default name. Uh, so which does not type check because the star path is not a string, but you can uh, like print a star path. The only thing is that, uh, can just have a look at what a star path is. Essentially that's a name, a base name, like the hello in slash nick slash star slash blah, 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 hello. And a hash, uh, which is uh, defined somewhere in the class. And um, it does not contain the prefix, the slash nisk slash star prefix, because that way the star path is essentially independent of where you put the star and all that, which in practice doesn't matter that much because most of the time the star will be under slash nisk slash star. But uh, as far as the model goes and for some exotic use cases, that's actually pretty important to be able to move star path from one star to the other. But that means that to actually print that star path, we need to access the underlying store, which is uh, not directly available here, but it's actually a field of state. Because, I mean, like everything in Nix, the uh, evaluation depends, uh, requires the store to be available, if only because you're reading things from the Nix store or putting things in the Nix store or printing star path requires the store. And so the store has a print star path method, which is what we want here. And oh, because that's not a pointer. And we can 
rebuild this and enter the ripple again. Just give it a bit of time. C++ has never been a fast language to compile. And here we are, we can call built-ins random star path and it's, okay, so it's not zero, it's Fs everywhere. But now we have something that is actually a valid star path. I mean, valid in the sense that it has the right shape for a star path, but it's not a, a valid path uh, existing in our store. Actually, we can probably check that, I think. Uh, Built-ins dot star path path if I remember correctly. Yeah, builtins.starpath is going to try and check whether this path exists and create it if it doesn't and it's just erroring out because it doesn't exist and we have no way of creating it. Um, so far so good. And uh, now we can be even a bit smarter and actually make this semantically correct because if we look at our store uh, I think I actually didn't uh, double check, but there should be a a way to list all the the existing store path. Um, so let's look at actually the API of a store, which is defined on lib store, which is the lib that defines all the store operation. So there's a store API header which defines a store class which itself defines the interface of our store. So the interface is a big thing. There's a lot of different operations. It's uh, actually, it's something that we'd be interested to at some point try and reduce that to a minimal set of operations. Uh, but for uh, efficiency reasons, uh, there's a lot of uh, redundancy in here. And there should be I thought there was a method to list all the stuff, but that apparently uh, nothing uh, directly existing. So, well, let's for for now uh, just keep our uh, wrong but kind of acceptable implementation and see how to test that. Um, so, in terms of tests, um, Nix doesn't have a lot of um, of uh, unit tests, uh, mostly for historical reasons. Uh, some of the sub libraries have have them, uh, but most of them are actually just tested via some end-to-end uh, -end tests, which live in the tests folder. So, for example, if you look at the uh, eval test, which is uh, not the one I was searching for. Uh, okay, well, let's just look at the list of all the tests that we had. Uh, oh, it's lang.sh. So this is the test that actually tests uh, most of the implementation and essentially it loops over a list of sample Nix expressions which all are either expected to fail or to succeed. To succeed. And with the result uh, also in line, which uh, so this kind of test has a name. I just rem don't remember it. And uh, so that could be a nice place to put our new test, except that it might not be great because we need to interact with the underlying store a bit more than what's available here. So let's let's create a new test actually. Um, Built-ins random store path. Dot sh. Uh, so let's start by sourcing this command dot sh, which sets up the test runner, uh, creates a new store in a temporary directory, and gives us a few utility functions that we might need. And uh, well, for starters, let's just um, let's just try and eval our random start path built-ins. Random store path and make sure that it doesn't crash. Then we need to also register this test in this big list of Nix tests. Uh, so let's add a new one 
built-ins random store path.sh and now we should be able to call test slash built-ins random store path.sh that test which is going to run our test and fail because uh, the invocation wasn't the right one. We need to dash 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 exp. Otherwise, it's going to assume that this is a file path. And if we run this again, it's succeeding. Uh, OK, we're happy we can. Uh, our built-ins exist and doesn't crash. And uh, so that's a good thing, maybe a nice thing to test even before we can know that uh, it's actually taking a random valid star path. We can check that it has the right shape for a star path, which I don't know how to do on top of my head. So we're going to defer that for later. Uh, let's just commit that uh, for few. Do we have access to the star path prefix from the test suite? Uh, yes, yes, you do. You're right. We do. We can do that. Um, so we should do, be able to do something like, uh, if I remember my bash regex. Yes, yeah, something like that. And uh, actually, we can look at this common dot sh, uh, which is defined from this common sh in file and there should be nix store dear variable yep which is actually our store prefix so if we do that i think that should check the thing we want uh no it doesn't is it the other way around oh it's color in a different color so that oh, okay so that sounds about right let's just add a bit of garbage to make sure yep Okay, so at least we know that it's under the next store. Um, oh, we could even uh, actually evaluate that uh, in plain Nix, I think, because there's a built in store path that exists. Well, I mean, bash would be good enough uh, for now. So, okay, so we have this. Uh, we have our primops. Um, which is a bit stupid right now, but uh, is working. So to get back to the first uh, stupid implementation, uh, the reason I thought there was a store method to list all the store path is that there's a bunch of uh, Nix commands that can take a dash dash all argument to act on all the store path. Uh, so maybe we can have a look at how this is implemented. Um, so here we have the all flag, which is setting all to true. Okay. And all is saying, oh, no, that's not the right all, actually. Uh, yeah, apply the operation to every star path. So what's happening if we pass dash dash all? Oh, there's a query all valid path. So it just... Uh, didn't have the shape that I was expected. So we can just do that and it's gonna return a star path set, which is a set of star path. So if we go back to here, so we can just have auto all star path equals state dot store arrow query all valid path. And now all we need to do um is to select one of these um so i don't let's look at uh, the c plus plus doc because i don't know whether there's a built-in thing to do that but there should be at the very least uh let's look at std sets maybe there's a and so we can uh now we can probably extract uh an element in a way that's implementation defined, but it's not going to be properly random. Uh, but at least what we have, which uh, should be good, 
is um, uh, what would be nice would be just to have an accessor that takes the nth element of the set. Uh, sorry. <coughs> it doesn't look like we have that. Um, but okay, we can always convert that into a vector if we, that's going to be awfully inefficient, but uh, we're already very inefficient because we are grabbing the whole set of star path so it, we're not up to that but let's look at how to do some randomness in c++ okay so we have this random header which defines a lot of things uh, is there a nice example that would prevent us from having to understand how that works uh, yes Um, okay, well, that's, I'm not sure that's going to be exactly correct to regenerate the random device each time, but that's going to be the simplest uh, for now. Um, so what we want, uh, default random engine, which should be, uh, probably a uniform well it's implementation defined but it's probably going to be a oh let, let's enforce uh, a uniform um oh no actually the distribution is defined below so let's yeah let's create a random engine from that and we need to select a random integer to know which star path we have uh, and we probably need to include the right header and we need to do something from uh, probably zero to the size of our set of star path uh, minus one and now that we have that, uh, okay, we can just select a random star path from this uh, distribution. And uh, now, so as I, so, yeah, we don't. Uh, uh, maybe we can do something if. Uh, the operator uh, iterator library is gentle enough with us. Uh, if we can, oh, why are you complaining? Um, so uh, let's create an iterator over the f the start of a set. Um, so begin will give us an iterator to an iterator to the start and increase it um, up by path number. Uh, oh no, it's not, it's not happy about that. That would have been too easy, but we can just loop over it probably. Uh, wow. Uh, old style C loop. I, I'm pretty sure there's a much prettier way to do that, but uh, and I'm fairly sure it's going to end up in a in an off by one error. But uh, okay, and now selected path iter should be an iterator over the nth element of our set. And so we should just be able to dereference de it and print that. Um, well, let's try it out and hope that it's not going to sec fold because I did something stupid. At least it's compiling. That's a good start. 
Okay, what if I try built-in random stop path? So it's very slow, which is expected. And now oh, it's cached. That's a shame. But apart from that, uh, it is indeed returning what seems to be a properly random path from the store. Let's just try to run it a bunch of time. Um, just to see whether it's actually random. Yeah, it's a different one each time. Okay, wonderful. Well, it's taking a couple of seconds to run, which is unbearably slow, but apart from that, it's okay. And uh, yeah, the part about caching is probably uh, going to be much trickier to solve because uh, Nix is assuming that this kind of stuff is referentially transparent. So uh, it's probably eager enough in the caching. Um, but oh, actually, maybe, maybe if we can force it to take an argument, uh, even if we currently don't use it, uh, Nix is not going to cache that. Maybe it's just caching the constants. So let's give it an argument. Um, okay, recompile. Actually, I want to have it take an argument, uh, not because um, it's very useful, but because uh, it's going to show how to pass arguments down the line. So that's a good excuse for me to introduce one. So now if we call that, so that's now a prim ops. Uh, let's call it with a stupid argument. And it's working. Oh, and now it's not cached. Wonderful. So we have a pretty useless built-in. Let's um, well, let's test it uh, a bit better. Um, so uh, actually, we could. Um, uh, so there was this built-in dot uh, stop path thing that we had, and so this should always hold now because built-in start random star path is returning a valid star path. So I guess we should just um, try this out. So let's start by filling the store. Um, so let's go in a temporary directory to not uh, mess with the test directory. And let's add some stuff in the store. So uh, this should add a uh, hundreds of uh, star path, uh, which should all be different. And now if we, um, well, we can always skip that test, but we can like, Let's just do it 10 times. That should be enough. Um, oh, oh. Uh, actually, just copy paste that. Uh, Nix instantiate eval x that thing. And that should always hold, uh, which we can test here. Uh, so the t one of the things that they're sourcing this command that sh sets is uh, the dash e bash options, which means that it's going to fail um, if any comment fails. And here it's failing because this is not a prim up and we need to apply it to something. So let's do it again. How does the operator know which type of argument it's accepting? Uh, so uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't, uh, the only way to know that is the in the implementation function, uh, you force, uh, so if you look at, uh, okay, this compa versions, uh, primops. Uh, so you f it, f it forces its first, its two arguments to a string 
here. And that's the only way we uh, enforce the type. So, and in our case, since we don't do anything with our argument, uh, we could pass anything. It's not even going to be evaluated. Like I could, uh, okay. uh, actually I could probably uh, do something like that. And because of laziness, that should be all right. Yeah. Uh, so back to our test, it's working. It's just uh, very slow because uh, our function is very slow. So running it uh, 12 times is gonna be slow, but at least it's working. Let's commit that and celebrate. Um, oops. I guess we should uh, improve a bit on the testing because to make sure that we're actually randomly selecting a star path of some definition of randomly, but that's already the first thing. Um, Okay, and well, I guess we can just stop here for today. Yeah.